教人亦都九中开会，多谢各位出席公务小组委员会今日嘅会议。喺二零一五至二零一六年度嘅立法会会期咧，截至到上次会议，我哋系审批咗九个项目，总拨款额咧系二百二十二亿四千四百一十万元嘅，连同二零一六年二月廿四号会议未完成审议嘅三份文件咧。今日嘅會議嘅議程上面咧，係有四份文件，撥款額咧合共係十七億四千五百萬元。如果所有撥款建議獲到委員通過咧，Now on the uh, in the panel, the uh, development panel, uh, the uh, of meeting of 22nd of uh, December, uh, the uh, panel has been consulted and the uh, uh, panel has given its support, and uh, its review report is now on your table. Now we have with us. Uh, The same officers, basically as last time. I think you have the list in front of you, so I will not read out their names. Now, at the last uh, meeting, we have already started discussing this document. Now, before the end of the meeting last time, there were two members who were waiting to speak. Let me see if they are here today. Albert Chen, first. Time, four minutes. Now, Chairman. Now, the issue for Tong Chong. Now, when the situation is very different from the 1990s, when the government started planning for Tong Chong, there is the air problem and the uh, aviation noise problem. They have uh, far. Uh, Gone far beyond what was、uh, prevailing at the time. Now I was a member of the environmental advisory committee, and、uh, I looked at the reports. The reports were not、uh, accurate at all. And the、uh, when Tong Chong was built up in The summer, the suspended particulates、uh, were the very high. Now, if you look at the warnings issued、uh, to elderly people,、uh, pregnant women, and children, uh, the uh, the advanced warnings、uh, there numbered the、uh, highest、uh, in whole of Hong Kong. In at noon and in summer, when wind speeds are low. And the sun is、uh, shining brightest. Now the、uh, suspended particulates in Tong Chong、uh, cause、uh, high health risks to those who have asthma and so on, and they might even be life-threatening. Now, so at the 
time, after a lot of uh, effort, the uh, EPD uh, added a number of uh, aerial quality monitoring points in Lantau. Uh, now, uh, and yet, uh, with the increase of uh, construction works uh, in this part, the uh, suspended particulate situation will deteriorate. Of course, one reason is the particulates from the mainland, but the dust in Tongchong itself also is part of the problem. Now, if you further develop Tongchong uh, on air quality, I don't foresee any improvement, but rather a deterioration so that the Tongchong residents are affected more seriously than before. I don't know whether if the EPD has further information to assure members. Now, you have now approved the fund. You may approve the funding. You may be setting up a death trap. Uh, who will answer? Uh, would be uh, Mr. Chung. Uh, please turn on the mic for Mr. Chung. On air quality at Tongchong, now in recent years, the EPD and its counterparts in the mainland have introduced many measures to improve air quality. So in recent years, the air quality in Tongchong and other parts have improved uh, continually. So. From 2010 to 2014, over those five years, the data that we monitored show, as a result of monitoring, shows that the air quality at Tongchong compared to other new towns is similar uh, compared to uh, Yunlong, uh, Timun, uh, Sha Tin. Now, on the Tongchong extension, we conducted an environmental impact assessment, and we see that in future, uh, during construction and after construction, the uh, air quality standards will be met. Next, uh, uh, Kokaki, first round, first four minutes. Now, Tongchong has to be developed. We know it's bound to happen and it's important, but it, Right now, many original residents are affected. I like to talk about transport and air pollution. Now, on transport, transportation, I'm very concerned because you uh, increase the population from under 100,000 to over 200,000. And the new population, they require a lot of transportation. Now, I don't know if you know about it. The transport panel was talking about it just now. They're going to further increase buses and uh, vehicles that go to the Hong Kong Chuhai Macau Bridge uh, crossing facilities. So there may be a sharp increase a sudden sharp increase in the number of uh, travelers affecting the local residents. So we have to take care of the local residents' uh, uh, need for transportation and other facilities. I think the member for his question. Now, uh, for the Tongchong extension, we have conducted a transportation impact assessment, uh, and we have a plan for the transportation support facilities. Now, Tongchong is the same as other places in that we will you uh, so railway as the main means of transport. And we have also a plan for roads. Now, on railway, the Tongchong line 
still has a lot of reserve capacity. Now the MTRCL will upgrade the capacity for the Tongcheng line. The signal system will be upgraded and there will be a new tunnel to make the trains operate run more smoothly. So we can cope up to 2036. Now on roads, we are building the Twin Moon to Chek Lap Kok Link Road. This will be for Lantau Island, the second uh, link to the mainland by road. And at Tong Chong, we decided to build the P1 road that will travel along the coast. Linking Tong Chong East to Northern Lantau uh, Highway. Now, overall, we will be able to cope with road and rail transport. Now, my question is very clear. Now, apart from what you anticipated, now you are going to develop the airport, the bridge. Now, these uh, will involve travelers uh, at irregular intervals. What will be the impact? Now on railway, on rail transport, we already took that into account. We anticipate that the third runway will increase the load by about 3%, the passenger uh, numbers and uh, the Hong Kong Chua and Macau Bridge will increase the uh, passenger load by 8, 7%. Ten Car Peel, first round, four minutes. Hey. Basically, there are three questions about Tong Chung. First is the railway station. In your plan, you reserve the space, right? But there's no mention of it in the text, in the paper. So can you provide us with an additional paper to make Tong Chung residents assured that after we've supported the funding, Tong Chung East Station will begin the design stage as soon as possible. Uh, there's no one from the um, house, uh, Housing and Transport Bureau. I don't know who will be responsible for the design. When will the construction work begin? Is it after the funding request has been approved? Then you will definitely begin the process. More than a decade ago, a decade ago, Yatung Estate was full by you. Well, maybe you're now giving them back the debt of a railway link, but you haven't stated it clearly in the paper. Without clear mentioning, then you will not make Tong Chung residents feel assured. Even if there's no representatives from the Housing and Transport Bureau, please ask them to give us a paper to explain the situation. And secondly, I personally uh, am aware that air quality in Tong Chung definitely has improved in some aspects, but actually there's still some uh, odor in the air. Upper Chen just then mentioned PM 2.5, PM 10, all these particulates, have they dropped at all? Please give us the information in writing, please. And also, I'm very sure that the older problem remains. The Environment Bureau, could you take a look? I always said that you have low emission zone. How, why not create a low emission zone in North Lantau? Please t show to us that you are determined to um, help the residents there and to ensure that there is development and quality of life there. And thirdly, um, prices, living costs. Well, there's no one from the um, Health and Welfare Bureau, but from a planning perspective, people have complained about rising food prices there, and there's also no street economy there. And all the markets there are run by a link. With such an arrangement, we have kept saying that there should be municipal markets, and yet in the latest planning, have you reserved 
any land for the um, setting up of, say, if the government takes on board our views to reserve spaces for the markets. Mr. Daniel Chong, sorry, Mr. Uh, Thomas Chen, please. Okay, on the rail link, um, Transport and Housing Bureau in 2014, when it announced its um, railway strategy plan, it has mentioned that the existing railway line will be extended to Tongchong West, and there will be the Tongchong West station. So the timetable is uh, between 2020 to 2024. Under the strategy, it's also mentioned that depending on the study on the extension of Tongchong, well, our proposal right now is to uh, add to the area Tongchong East Station. So we will actually um, discuss the study results with MT LCL and the Housing and Transport Bureau to help um, the railway station can cope with the development needs of the area. As for air quality, may I ask uh, Mr. Chung to supplement? Yes. As for um, the um, pollutants there, they're not actually emissions caused by activities or development, but rather the pollutants you mentioned are actually are actually come about from organic, you know, chemistry. It's the product of chemical reaction. So this it's not really related to development. Tenkar Pio just then mentioned that they uh, want you to well he wants you to give them some data and figures. Could you provide those uh, pollution improvement figures to us later on? Yes. Okay. Mr. Tang also asked about whether there will be a municipal market in the future. Yes. Chairman in the area fifty six and area thirty nine, the public housing and stay area that are uh, under planning. They're near to yet Tong Estate. For these projects we have reserved areas to build markets for the benefits of Tung Chung and Tung Chung West residents. So I think that would actually address your concern. Okay, next one, Mat Mei Kun. First time for minutes. In your construction plan, there will be um, the construction of a main road, P1 road. So what about a timetable? Would it actually tie in with the development schedule for Tung Chung? And also, similar to what Tan Kapu has asked, railway station for the entire Tung Chung development. I think you need to address the transportation issue first, you know, before you get people in. Because if you don't address the transportation issue, then people will just be crowded, very, very crowded, you know, uh, in, in the same place. Do you have any timetable for the completion of the railway station? To make sure that you know uh, people, okay, will actually have access to the railway services, and also in your Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines, you mentioned that for ten thousand people, there should forty to forty-five market stores, but you uh, removed this guideline earlier. Would you consider bringing? Bringing it back, particularly for the development of a new town like Tung Chung, can you uh, readopt this standard again? Say, on the GIC site, to ensure that there will be adequate space for markets to satisfy the needs of residents there. I'd like to stress that I hope that Tung Chung development will be more, you know, human oriented. Not just you know being commercially oriented and, and to have hotels there everywhere. And secondly, maybe you could answer those questions first. Who would like to answer, Mr. Chung? Thank you, Chairman, uh, and thank you, Ms. Mack. On the transportation link, as I mentioned just then, in Tung Chung, the new town development plan is supported by a whole set of transportation links. 
As for the timetable for completions of the length, it will tie in with the date of arrival of the um, expected residents, particularly for Chong Chong East. In the future, uh, we're expecting more people to move in there. So we will develop the transportation and the infrastructure according to the population intake. Next one, Ms. Wu, could you answer the other question? Yes, as for Ms. Max's point about Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines, yes, in 2009, we did remove the standard you mentioned because back in 07, the um, environmental and hygiene department uh, wanted to make better use of our public resources, and he, they decided that um, whether to build new markers would be um, a matter to be decided on the basis of an area basis, not on the population basis. In Tongchung, for GIC sites or in um, housing cat A area, um, lower floors could be used for retail or market purposes. So we plan that uh, from we will encourage shops on street levels. As for markets, for each housing estate, we will consult the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department, and if necessary, we can provide markets. But I think you need to get that sorted out in the planning stage. If you think the new town needs a public market, you need to be aware. Just think you said you would provide the land for the building of retail shops or markets. But as a property developer, with their shopping malls, they would rather rent out their shops to other um, business people rather than people, you know, uh, using the shop as a market. They wouldn't reserve space as markets. So in your planning stage, you have to prepare the land first, because if you don't reserve the land, there will be no markets in the future. Your time's up, but could you answer briefly? Yeah, do you, are you prepared for that in the planning stage? Even um, the planning standards uh, have no provision for the provision of a market on the population basis. Each time for a new item, we will consult the Food and Environmental Department environmental hygiene department, and if they see the need to provide a public market, then we can, in a public housing estate, in a subsidized housing estate, or in a private housing estate, uh, we can list out such requirement. Well, this is uh, an item about detailed signs of designs um, of a project. So I think administration, you should really um, Consider, you know, members' uh, concerns. Next one is Jiang Mafeng. Extending the Tung Chung New Town, of course, is very beneficial to the area. I support this plan. In the government paper, I found that the Tung Chung New Town, its existing infrastructure, can accommodate 12, 124,000 people, and yet the population now is only 80,000. So we haven't reached the ceiling yet. So is it because of the lack of transportation link, as members just mentioned about it? Is it the, that uh, the lack of transportation links failed to meet residents' demands, therefore fewer have moved in there? Now we are talking about the extension of the town. Would you review then the existing infrastructure and consult con uh, residents there so that in the extension you can provide what is really needed there. Who would answer? Mr. Chung? Thank you, Mr. Chung, for your question. The existing Chung Chung New Town facilities or design has a capacity for 124,000 people. Uh, it has currently 80,000 people living there. So there is still land to be developed in the new town. You may know that in Yinghe Street, off the street, there is land now being developed. In other words, 
for the entire Chongchung New Town. It's still in the process of developing, being developed, and there, actually there's room for um, expansion of the population to 124,000. Understand that you will carry out reclamation involving 130 hectares of land. So will the reclamation works uh, affect the uh, marine ecosystem there? If so, what sort of contingencies plans do you have and also what would you do to minimize the impact on the marine life there? Yes, um, for the extension of Tongchong, we did carry out an environmental impact assessment. So in our proposed reclaimed area, I've mentioned that for the impact on marine life, particularly you may be particularly concerned about the Chinese white dolphins. Those areas actually to be affected are not really where the uh, Chinese white dolphins will frequent or neither is it the habitat of uh, the white dolphins. And uh, we've also looked at that within that area. There aren't, there aren't any marine organisms uh, with high conservational value. Therefore, the reclamation would have very limited impact on marine life or the ecosystem there. But we will while carrying out the reclamation. We will actually build seawalls um, to enhance the ecosystem there and the, the marine ecosystem there. Okay, next one, Chang Han Ban, four minutes. Tung Chung, the planning for it. I know you've you've heard a lot of opinions from us regarding the reclamation plan for the purpose of not affecting the Tung Chung Bay. And also, uh, there's been work done on uh, Tongchung River conservation. Now, on Hong Kong government planning standards, now I asked about this many times. The standards are not very satisfactory. Now, I'd like to ask, will the government, in respect of the supply of parking spaces in the new development areas, uh, brief us. Now, very often uh, there is a great need for these spaces and the standards have been amended. Now, the supply of parking spaces for small residential units have been reduced sharply, so I'm concerned that in future the residential developments there won't be enough parking spaces. And Tongchong is quite far away. Now, uh, it's quite a congested area. Uh, now, very often people would, it's a, the trains are very congested, so people buy cars. And also, the markets are also controversial. Now, even though you amended the planning standards and guidelines, you may not have a figure for markets. But I'd like to know, in future developments, for markets, will you do something? Mr. Chung, I thank the member for his question. Now, on parking spaces, we have allowed for 10,000 parking spaces, so we think that there will be enough. Now, on transport facilities, we hope to use the railway as the main mode. That will be more efficient, and it will also be helpful for air quality. How about markets? Now, other members have asked similar questions. Perhaps Mr. Chen can supplement. Now, even though in the planning standards now, we haven't 
made any forecast for markets yet in uh, residential uh, A developments, uh, uh, especially for public housing, we uh, provide commercial facilities and that might include markets. And uh, uh, so uh, at the next stage of development, we will discuss closely with the housing department and when necessary, we can provide the public market in such places. Mr. Chen, I hope the government listens to us uh, so that there are public markets in Tongchong. Right now, the prices uh, for shopping at the uh, Tongchong are very high. So I think the representatives of the government have heard that clearly. Three members have asked the same question. Next, Emily Lau, four minutes. Uh, I'm the fourth. Markets are very important. You look at Tishui Wai, in some parts the residents are very angry. So please put a public market here and not let link rate monopolize it. Now on the table, there's a document that says it was discussed in the development panel. And the third item is about employment. And you say that you will provide some career uh, vocation-oriented uh, educational institutions. Because uh, uh, at the airport, uh, there are three to 4,000 vacancies. And now you mentioned the logistics industry. So how will you help them? Uh, what is meant by vocation-oriented uh, institutions? Now, we talked to the Vocational Training Council. Now, uh, it's, uh, they say that there should be a child care center at the airport so that the women can bring their children to work there. Now, and also, about the hospital, I'd like to mention that as well, because I talked to other uh, bureaus. There aren't enough doctors at the Lentau Hospital. Now, at Lentau Hospital. Now, uh, the, uh, the, it's, it's been suggested that it can be a subsidy. Now, uh, I asked some doctors whether they can go there and uh, work there part-time. Now, it's far away. Uh, they, they, they don't uh, get paid that much, but these support facilities are important. How do you deal with people's uh, livelihood issues? Uh, Mr. Chen? At Tongchong East, we have reserved the land to develop uh, uh, some uh, educational institutions, and we've uh, talked to the Education Bureau, and uh, they are also concerned about how to provide the facilities. One possibility is that the Vocational Training Council can provide training facilities uh, there for uh, jobs related to the airport uh, and so on. And uh, at the North Natal Hospital site, we have already set enough space for expansion on services. Now at the next stage, we, when people start to move in, we will maintain close links with the Food and Health Bureau so that we can provide what is needed. Now on the manpower needs for doctors, we will uh, talk to the hospital authority. You should be flexible. Once the doctors are open, you should have doctors serving there. Now, on the vocation-oriented institutions, you can talk to the airport authority. Now, they have uh, thousands of vacancies. Now, what kind of uh, people do they need? 
perhaps uh, some Tongchung residents are able to fill those jobs but require more training. On child care, I hope this can be done by the government in other places too. You should uh, allow the women to work in that way. Now, I know that there are insufficient manpower. There is insufficient manpower for airport, for airplane maintenance uh, related work. Dr. Fernando Chang, there is a serious problem about markets. The Yatong Estate Market is to be closed for possibly two to three months for refurbishment. This is the link's uh, usual tactic. The uh, re re do a renovation and they charge higher prices and uh, apply higher rents and then uh, people will suffer from higher prices. Now, Tong Chong 39, uh, 56, are you going to outsource? Uh, Hong Shui Q NDA, uh, the new market will be outsourced. Now, the it's under housing department and then uh, you outsource it. So, so the process is uh, you there's renovation and uh, higher rents and then higher prices. So please uh, make sure that there is a municipal market, and then you should tell the housing uh, department and uh, uh, FEHD that the market should not be outsourced uh, now. Because uh, if you don't have this plan beforehand, it may be too late. And also on Tongchung River, uh, it has been uh, subject to damage uh, for a long time already. Uh, you uh, yourself say that it's of uh, high ecological value, and uh, there's a lot been a lot of dumping and uh, rock uh, excavation. Uh, now it's going to be a Riverside Park now. Uh, but people say there's not enough space for that. Now, independent media uh, went and saw that there is uh, still a lot of uh, construction waste and uh, uh, mud there. Uh, now, how do you avoid this kind of uh, ecological damage? Uh, I don't know if is there enough time. Uh, answer these two questions perhaps first. Uh, Mr. Chung. <coughs> uh, on the conservation of Tung Chung River, in the future, now for Tung Chung River, there is a uh, western uh, uh, stream and the uh, uh, eastern stream. Now, at the western stream, we have a riverside park. Now, uh, there will be channelization, uh, that is, uh, uh, where th there has been concrete paving, we will restore it back to a natural stream. And the two sides of the river, uh, to about 30 meters wide on each side, will become part of the riverside park, a river park. Now, now, even if you have done this conservation yet from uh, upstream, well, not really upstream, now upstream of the river park there continues to be dumping of construction waste. How do you avoid that? Now, on both sides of the river, we have a 30 meter conservation area. Uh, we do not develop that and of course a dumping would be prohibited. How about the market? Yes, you are the fifth who asked the question. He has answered already. Perhaps you can answer. There's no guarantee. Uh, Mr. Thomas Chen, let me repeat briefly. Now, at the planning stage, uh, 
uh, we already followed the uh, exchange policy for uh, the uh, uh, FHB and FEHD uh, to see whether there is a need for each uh, project, and uh, we will reflect the members' views to them. Now, on uh, public housing development, we uh, reserve space for retail facilities, including the market. So we will talk to the housing department uh, to see whether the markets will be provided. Now, also, uh, on the Tongchung West River Valley Conservation, now we have done already a uh, 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 development plan. Now, uh, so the, uh, there is a law enforcement uh, power uh, that can be enforced. Liang uh, Qicheng, four minutes. Now, concerning this project, I support it. Now, at the development panel, I already mentioned a lot of these points, like uh, market, uh, transportation, and employment opportunities. Now, but I see that uh, if this item is endorsed, you have to go to Finance Committee, and it wouldn't be 2021 before work would formally started and uh, people won't be able to move in till 2023. Now, uh, the speed of the project uh, is significant. Now, when this uh, item was discussed in panel, uh, we gave our support, but there are still unclear mat matters especially concerning employment. Now, all the new town developments discussed in the development panel, including uh, Kamtin, uh, Hong Shui Kiu, and also New uh, uh, Tongchong extension, now you say that uh, there will be uh, land set aside for industry, etc., etc. Now, uh, here for Tongchong, uh, you seem to rely on the airport for uh, the providing employment opportunities. Now, uh, commercial floor space, uh, maximum 320,000 square meters. I don't know how many jobs that will create. So you may have a repetition of Tong Chong uh, of uh, Ti Shui Wai. That is, uh, people have difficulty finding jobs. And for Tong Chong, uh, there is a further difficulty. You have a toll stage, uh, uh, a toll uh, collection uh, uh, making the transportation cost very expensive. So how do you help people be employed? And also the shopping at market. Now, if you uh, leave it to the housing department, then how do you help uh, the uh, people living in private developments, because 40% of, of the population live in private housing. Now, you have to explain clearly how you resolve that. Who will answer? Planning department first. Ms. Wu, Assistant Director, please. As for employment, Based on our current plan, we're providing more than 800,000 um, square meters areas of offices, commercial and hotel areas. We expect them to provide more than 40,000 jobs. All these opportunities, we expect that about 18,000 of them will be uh, of uh, non-technical or clerical support low-skill jobs. Hopefully, uh, we can help actually more people there find work in the same area. Next one, Mr. Thomas Chen, PS, 
Yeah, as for markets, we mentioned that、um, it's not just、uh, limited to housing department managed flats.、Uh, some GIC sites、uh, will continue to consult the、uh, Food and Welfare Bureau and the Food and Environmental Health Department to see whether there's a need for retail facilities and markets there. If so, we will look into the feasibility. Second time, Liang Guo Hong, three minutes. Talking about markets in the mainland,、uh, well, even now there is this talk of you know actually the importance of accommodating people's need to buy at markets, buy things at markets. Housewives actually tend to go to markets. For grocery shopping, or other people as well. You said that there will be five hundred thousand square meters of、uh, areas for office uses, and also、um, other tens of thousands of square meters of areas for commercial areas, and then fifty thousand square meters of GFA for hotel use. You said you will consult the Food and Environmental Health Environmental Health Department, but what's the point? You should consult residents there instead. I don't really understand. Why can't you make a change? You have done all your calculations already, and yet on this issue of markers, you kept saying that you would consult FHD, but but FHD. Every、um, food and environmental hygiene department is not actually what's at stake here. All along, I've thought that this plan sounds crazy to me. I've asked it many times. See, while Lam kept saying that they want to create grade A, grade B offices and hotels, they are everywhere in Kowloon East and everywhere. But on what base? On what basis did he come to that decision? He's neglected other sorts of buildings. I've kept saying this. Tung Chung again. We have said a lot about the cost of getting into the town, and also getting out of the town to elsewhere, and yet you're wasting so much money on the high-speed rail link. Why don't you spend the money instead on the issues in Tung Chung that members just raised? Therefore, we objected to the building of the high-speed rail link. What about your thinking on the markets? Now that you are moving so many people there, from eighty thousand to two hundred sixty-eight thousand four hundred people, what are you going to do for them? If you cannot sort out the transportation problem, what can you do? Well, I think the same question was asked before. And as for markets, Lang Kuang Ho mentioned the allocation of three hundred twenty-seven thousand square meters GFA for retail use. Will that area include the area for markets, Mr. Chen? P.S. Mr. Chen, thank you, Chairman, and Mr. Lang for your question. As for markets, provision of markets, just then the planning department staff has explained that is、uh, the Food and Wealth Bureau and、uh, FHD's policy is to work out、uh, planning for markets on the basis of not population but on the situation in each particular area, and the two parties will give advice whether markets are needed. So as we said. Planning-wise, whether it's in GIC or residential A area, the、uh, 327,000 square meters GFA is also、um, allocated for retail use. And if there's a need, all these areas could be used to provide markets. And I also said that for public housing, normally there will be ancillary facilities there. Which could include markets. I think he's lying, Chairman. You kept talking about FHD, but then you have to have the land first. If you don't have the land, then how can you create the markets? 
Mr. Leung, I think just that Mr. Chan already mentioned that uh, 327,000 square meters GFA for retail use includes potential sites for markets. But if the FEHD doesn't get the site, then there's no point having the market. There is no possibility of having the market. It could be a park and shop there instead of a uh, you know ordinary wet market. But I think that uh, the administration has taken or has listened to your views, concerns about markets. Okay, next one, Albert Chan. If uh, an area is zoned GIC, then the area can be used as markets. It's just that where the administration has such guidelines internally. In Tin Shui Wai, the plan there actually include an area zone for funeral parlors, but it was later changed. So it's up to the government. Now, my question now, my follow up question on air quality. As I said earlier on, in the past, even with the current assessment, I believe that it has not really looked at the impact on people's health from the particulars, suspended particulars. I know that in the past five, uh, four years, air quality has improved because there are fewer, there have been fewer projects. But in Tongchong West and the Hong Kong Macau China Bridge projects. Or when a bridge is commissioned, when all those actually come into full swing, I'm sure that the air quality will deteriorate. My analysis is based on the geographical nature of um, Tongchong there because the area is surrounded by two large mountains. So all the bad air is trapped in the area. Sheltered by two high mountains, and also with car exhumes, there will be more suspended particulars in the air. That's for sure. I look at your air quality assessment. You said that the quality is in line with the uh, standard, but even with um, standard that is within uh, expectation, it could also have deadly results because if in every year. There is, if there are only ten or nine days a year which actually exceed the limits, it could still be damaging to people's health. So, on the basis of the current pace of development, I can sure I can be sure that you will have or see the worst air pollution ever. You can look at the geographical characteristics of the area there. So I don't understand why. Your experts hold the view that you know is um, actually meet the standards required. Meeting the standards is one thing, but after all the people have moved into the area, you will see actually people. You could see people's health deteriorating to the point of dying. Mr. Chung, thank you, Mr. Chen, for your question. Just that Mr. Chen mentioned that in the future there could be more projects getting into full steam near Tung Chung. Our impact or environmental impact assessment has already taken into consideration projects like the third runway. And our assessment result, as I mentioned, shows that the air quality would be actually within the um, standard, acceptable standard. Albert Chen, in responding to Tan Kapu's question, Mr. Chung has promised that they will provide us with supplementary information on air quality. And the environmental impact assessment isn't really on the uh, Air quality there, but on the uh, Tung Chung New Town extension, the report was submitted to the director on October eight last year. I know the report also got the approval of the Environmental Advisory Council. I asked the question, but Tank up here asked that the, the report and other air quality data be submitted to us later on. Chairman, one more line. 
I used to sit on the Environmental Advisory Council. I know that all the papers were approved there, but none of the report covered actually an impact caused by so many projects that will be getting underway at the same time. You know, actually all these projects could lead to a death trap caused by worsening air pollution. Director, it said that even should the assessment is um, done, would, would that mean that the situation could still get worse? Mr. Chung, yes, our assessment includes all projects that were due to be carried out. So they are really all the projects are covered by the impact assessment. So Mr. Ebert Chen's point about the um, mentioning of the third runway projects like that, its impact actually is already taken into account in our environmental impact assessment on the new town in Tongchong. Next one, Ten Kapiu. I think uh, back in 2006, I remember when I was at Yetong Estate in Tongchong, the weather, the air quality was really bad, especially during springtime. I don't understand what kind of mist is it. It seemed deadly to me. Of course, the situation has improved now compared to 2006, but please uh, ask them to provide figure for the past 10 years concerning the uh, suspended particulars and other pollutants. And secondly, let me mention this again. Even though you are claiming that the Tung Chung East, Tung Chung West, there will be uh, railway links, but in this paper, there's no mention at all in writing of the uh, transport links. So can you provide us in writing that to say whether should funding be approved, the 1.5 km Tung Chung link road would be built immediately? Or when will the construction begin? Please give us a clear idea and a promise on what you will do. Surely there are already some Tongchong West residents, some villagers, some uh, indigenous villagers, and uh, some of the residents, these residents have uh, asked to speak to us uh, on the resumption of land. Now, can you be clear uh, now for now after the OZP has been drawn and uh, af even after the EIA has been passed now which uh, areas in Tongchong West uh, will uh, get uh, land resumption from the government and uh, can you tell the villagers uh, uh, because you ask them to read the A3 plans, they don't know how to do it. Thomas Chen. Now on railway and land resumption, I will respond first. Now on railway, let me clarify. Right now, what we are applying for funding for is a project to uh, for detailed design and uh, uh, site investigation. This doesn't have directly to do with railway development. Now, on the railway, we can supplement uh, the inform sub with information. Now, on the scope of land resumption, now for Tongchong West, uh, that is mainly a conservation area, and at the next stage, if there needs to be public projects uh, and if there's going to be land resumption for public housing development, we will conduct a consultation on the scope of resumption. Next, Albert Ho. Uh, uh, next, Mr. Uh, Ho Ho Yan. Uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Uh, next, Mr. Ho, uh, now we are willing to communicate with the government on uh, the uh, fisheries uh, industry. Now, you have set aside uh, 90 uh, 
spaces for yachts, and you have provided these 90 spaces for yachts. But uh, have you set a? Can you set aside spaces and piers for the fishermen and uh, some berthing spaces for small boats? <laughs> Please provide us with some designs, uh, data, so that we can talk to the these uh, residents now, because otherwise it's very difficult uh, for us to uh, be intermediaries. Which government officer to answer? Uh, Ms. Wu? Now, on the pleasure boats or yachts, now we have uh, received uh, comments during public consultation that there should be uh, spaces for pleasure craft, uh, for the promenade and the hotel facility. So we have uh, uh, planned for the uh, 90 odd spaces and uh, we can plan in greater detail later. Now, uh, and we can also consider whether there should be spaces set aside for fishermen. Now, Lantau uh, and uh, the area, including the area near Tongchong, uh, they have uh, quite rich fishery resources. Can you build some kind of fisherman's wharf? It will help the uh, tourism sector. Now, I can talk to the fishermen. Now, such this kind of development can benefit everybody. Now, if the stakeholders are against this uh, project, the government will experience greater opposition. Let me supplement. Now, in our plan, we have considered uh, improving the development for Ma Wan Chung. We will improve the uh, environment there and, and to co meet tourism needs. There can be seafood restaurants and uh, uh, seafood uh, s retail facilities. Now, uh, will you have uh, some uh, data on the uh, ecological shoreline. Now, eco shoreline. Now, with the eco shoreline, we hope to provide better environment for uh, life forms that uh, 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 survive in uh, uh, tide. Uh, during uh, rising tides, uh, and uh, in Australia and other places, they have uh, this kind of eco shorelines, and we will learn from the experience. In the remaining time, I would like to ask Mr. Yip Chi Ming, the vice chairman, to chair the meeting. Next, uh, Alice Mack, second round, three minutes. Many Colleagues have talked about the market issue. Now, Mr. Chen has said several times that there will be land for retail that can be used for market. But one can imagine now how much uh, will the uh, market charge compared to what the shops in the shopping mall charge. Now, if uh, you leave it to the developer, they will certainly build uh, shopping malls instead of markets. Then we can do nothing because uh, uh, both are retail. Now, unless you feel it's not needed, now I don't know why planning department says it has to ask FEHD or FHB. Now you are doing the planning. You have to think of the future residents' needs. You have to consider all their needs. You shouldn't just uh, 
do what the uh, Food and Housing Bureau, Food and Health Bureau, tells you to do. You should have uh, provide balanced development. That's why at the planning stage there should be a GIC site uh, specified for a uh, public market. Otherwise, uh, we will only have shopping malls, and then we will only have the major uh, retail supermarket chains. So, as planners, you should uh, do the planning and not just ask the uh, FHB or FHD. Now, you should uh, aim for balanced development in the future community. Also, on the development of Ma Wan Chong village, you said that there will be improvement. You said that there will be some improvement to the streetscape. Now, what will that be like? Because we hope this can be achieved earlier during the development of Tong Chong. Now, because the residents already living there uh, find uh, we may be able to benefit. Planning department, uh, is it Miss Wu? On Ma Wan Chong improvement facilities, now we propose that there will be uh, car parks, uh, parking facilities for tourist coaches to encourage uh, visitors to go there. Uh, next, uh, Michael Tian, three minutes. Oh, he's out of the room. Uh, Mr. Ho? Now, I think uh, Ms. Alice Mack is right. Very often, the government consulted the bureau or department, but not the district, not the residents, including the fishermen. And then we arrange a meeting, but that is uh, rather would rather would be rather late. So the government uh, should uh, pr be prepared in advance for so that we can uh, talk to the residents. Now, academics tell us uh, that Hong Kong is a very good uh, uh, area for uh, uh, marine life to lay eggs and breed. Now, uh, but you need to have a scientific report to see whether uh, your uh, plan will work for local marine life. Now, we don't want a, uh, any kind of uh, uh, failure that uh, is not anticipated. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would be too late when uh, what you've done is done. Now, on Eco Shoreline, our thinking is the same as Mr. Ho's. Now, we haven't had eco shorelines in Hong Kong before, but we will learn from the experience abroad, but we will also take into account the local situation. Now, will their successes uh, be applicable to Hong Kong? We will look into that in detail to ensure that the eco shoreline will be uh, effective. Uh, any follow-up? Uh, not now. Michael Tan, second round. Uh, Mr. Uh, James Tan, uh, three minutes. Uh, Michael Tan, sorry. Now, uh, I'd like to ask also about rail transport. Now, I don't see how we can develop North Land Town and Third Runway and Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge. Now, there will be a lot of new uh, passengers, and yet we don't need another railway. Now, uh, the 
government said uh, without Brother Island, it's difficult to uh, that without uh, Gao Yichou, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, manage. Now, to develop any part of North Lantau, anything in North Lantau, because you have certain runway and uh, uh, North Lantau, then you need a, a new uh, uh, bridging railway. A uh, ra railway that spans the strait. Now, so Gao Yichou is a key for the development of North Lantau, but the way you handle it is that you leave it till last. Now, I find it very difficult to accept, so I may not support your proposal. I'd like to ask a simple question. Now, I want to understand. Now, your current alignment, there's a special track for the uh, Airport Express and there's one for the Tongchong Line. Now, uh, after Cheng Yi, there's the Cheng Ma Bridge. Uh, there can always be two, there, there's a limitation. There can be uh, one, uh, two tracks, uh, one uh, in each direction, and there can be no additional track. Now, because there has been uh, collision with the bridge before. Now, uh, when one bridge, uh, one rail train is on the bridge, uh, you have to wait for another, uh, the first train to pass before, before you allow the second train on the bridge. So there can only be uh, 20 uh, odd, only 20 odd uh, trains passing through during an hour. So. And how so? How do you cope with the third runway and uh, uh, Hong Kong Chua and Macau Bridge? Have you estimated the additional passengers uh, from those sources? Now you told me last time from uh, about the uh, passenger load, but you didn't uh, really. Those are not the figures that I need. Uh, gone. Director. Thank you. Just uh, Mr. Tian, well, mentioned about the link. The Tongchong line comprises two sections because of the restriction of Qingma Bridge. The entire Tongchong line has a Lantau session, and the other is the urban session. For the Lantau session, its patronage is really uh, restricted with optimization of the signaling system and so forth, I think we can increase the capacity. Right now, the Lantau session during peak hours, each hour it has a patronage of uh, capacity for 5,800 people. He said that capacity, I'm talking about what capacity, well, well, you're talking about capacity, but they never gave me the demand figures. That is with the third runway and so forth. I don't think there are any figures available now. Well, I do agree. Well, I'll move on to that. Our estimates now is that by 2036, the passenger volume will go up to 19,500, which of which 3% uh, of passengers will come from the third runway and 7% will come from the Hong Kong Macau Zhuhai Bridge. So that's the patronage. Okay, Chairman, please give us the figures how you came to give us a paper on how you came to the figures. Who worked out the figures? Director, okay, we will provide them to you after the meeting. Next one, Fernando Zhang. Second time, three minutes. Yes. We are worried not just about the planning provision for markets. We also hope that in public places there can be areas reserved for community economic activities. There are actually non formal economy which actually suffers from a lack of space. The financial secretary just mentioned the idea of food trucks. So you need to have 
areas to accommodate those trucks. For a lot of uh, grassroots sectors, they do need to have an area for them to sell things, or if in Tinshui Wai, there's this Tinshui market that allows people to sell their wares. If it's not properly planned, then those uh, activities, economic activities, would not be successful, and you wouldn't be able to foster community economy. So I hope that you can accommodate uh, in the in your planning. I'm also concerned about bicycles, Tongchong East. Or the Tongchong New Town, or in in the West, in the New Town, there's a better planning for cycle tracks. But I'm worried about the parking spaces for bicycles. The Phase One, Phase Two Tongchong development. I mentioned back then that besides having cycle park track, you have to provide for the parking spaces. And yet there. Actual lack of such spaces outside public facilities or residential. Buildings, so you need to reserve spaces for that purpose. And thirdly, I don't know about the ratio of um, public housing that's for sale and those which is um, being rented out. Can you give us the ratio of rental and for sale flats in public housing units? Okay, the first one. Would you provide area for facilities like tin cell market or for hawkers? And secondly is the cycling, cycling space, parking spaces, and the thirdly is the ratio for for between for, for sale and rental flats. Miss Wu, okay, on community facilities in the Tung Chung New Town, the extension area, we've planned for various public spaces. For example, waterfront promenade, a central park, and some waterfront cultural piazzas. For the public spaces, besides actually providing area for the public to enjoy themselves, the places can also allow for the staging of community activities there. So there can be a lot of flexibility. How about for drainage and provision of electricity? Facilities. If you can plan them properly, then that will actually provide a lot of convenience for community activities. So, have you considered make considerations for those facilities? In our detailed design stage, we can actually try to incorporate all those variety of facilities. How about bicycle parking spaces? Chairman in Tongchong East. In the detailed design stage, we will. Assess the demand for parking spaces and where they should be. And in the future cycle track, it will actually be uh, along the waterfront and stands all the way to Tai Ho, where there are parking spaces. How about the third question? The ratio between for sale and for rent public housing units. Mr. Chen Piers, I think now. In our plan, we have reserved well on the basis of long term housing strategy um we will adopt the uh, six four ratio for the public housing estates uh flats that will be sold and rented out as for the actual ratio, I think at the next stage. The housing authority would decide based on the actual situation. Right now, we don't have a fixed quota or indicator yet. Okay, next one, Emily Lau. Second time, three minutes. Chairman, many members have talked a lot about markets. I think whether the at the finance committee or not, or what I think the administration should give us more details as for planned facilities. I think on various occasions we've mentioned this. About the inadequacy of homes for the elderly, nurseries, and homes for the disabled. Now, in the planning stage, shouldn't you consider where to put all these facilities? The waiting lists are so long for such homes. So, shouldn't you consider that at this stage? Miss Wu, thank you, Chairman. Ms. Lau. I think during the planning stage, 
according to the uh, Hong Kong Planning Standards and Guidelines, uh, we have reserved places for community facilities, including nurseries, daycare centers for elderly people, and so forth. And all those facilities need not be uh, built at uh, independent sites. Indeed, depending on the needs of uh, different areas, we can actually incorporate such facilities. Well, what if these homes are not built in the end? I don't know how you work out the demand. Across Hong Kong, the waiting lists are very long. I wonder if in the end you will not get any built. I hope that you can be more concrete and guarantee that now at this early planning stage, on such necessary facilities, maybe you can reserve the space in advance for them. Assistant Director, I think in phase one works um, on the size of public housing estates in our plan or outline plan, we will include some community facilities and we'll discuss with the housing department and authority as well. I hope that you'll relay our views to the housing department or who else because we don't just want to talk about it now. We have to face the fact that the waiting list are long. Many people are trying to get into those homes. So when you do the planning and design, please make sure that you know you have space for them. Yes, I agree with uh, Ms. Lau's point of view. It's not just about the need in that area, but the need across the society, across Hong Kong. Even if there's no such need for a home in Tongchong, you can still plan for such homes to meet the overall need in Hong Kong. Please seriously consider the idea. Any supplement, P.S.? Yes, planning wise, the planning department in regards to Tong Chung development, we have reserved adequate space for community facilities. On um, members' concerns today about markets, nurseries, homes for the elderly, and other community facilities, we are well aware of that. And we will reflect them to the Food and Welfare Bureau and also um, the Housing Department so that at a later stage we will. Actually, have more detailed plans for such facilities at a later stage. Okay, next one, Chai Ban. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yes. I hope that in your next one, I hope that you will include markets there, and I also hope that the government can now take a look at where in Tongchong there should be the markets instead of. Um, after all the approvals are given, then you say, oh, there's no need for markets. That would not be right for me. As for provision of car parking spaces, you said that in the future there will be 10,000 car parking spaces. Are these uh, 10,000 newly added spaces, or will that be the overall total for Tong Chung? Quite a number of car parking spaces in Tong Chung now are actually, on, um, are actually in car parks on wastelands. Is the government okay? You know, has seen that uh, you know after a housing project is finished, the car, pa car parking spaces available is less than what was expected early on, and also for Tong Chung residents now, many of them do work in the airport, but yet transportation taking them to the airport isn't sufficient. Will the government consider? How you can provide more convenience to people who have to work in the airport, particularly with the third runway. Each day there will be a large number of people going to work at the airport. Would you consider to take them there by rail? So that can be rail linkages between the airport and the town? Yeah, three questions on the future plans for markets and provision of car parks and Thirdly, I think Chen Han Peng, in at that meeting, we talk about it too. Indeed, we will have a public hearing, and we'll sort out the issue with the housing and transport period. So, but maybe the administration can answer the first two questions first. I think the director did mention it uh, somewhat earlier. 
As for car parking spaces, the ten thousand of them, they will be new spaces. The ten thousand ones will be in the new town extension. How did you come to this figure of ten thousand? You you didn't make it up, right? Is it based on your planning standard on the basis of population? Is it? We are talking about there will be a population of two hundred sixty thousand, and the parking spaces will be ten thousand. How will the car parking spaces be scattered? Any information, Assistant Director? Yes, according to Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines, on each development there is a requirement. Are based on the GFA to ensure there is adequate car parking spaces to support various developments. Uh, so the car parking spaces will be based on the opinion submitted to us by the transport department. I think in the in the later stage we'll again follow up on this issue with the transport department. I think according to the Hong Kong, I think it's problematic to follow the Hong Kong planning standards. Because the standards have been altered in recent years, leading to a uh, reduction in the number of car parking spaces. For small flats, the car parking spaces will be drastic, drastically reduced. I really want to know more details. Could you provide information to us later on? I agree with uh, Mr. Chen Pan. You are reducing the supply of car parking spaces, and yet, well. If you are living in the urban areas, then that's fine. But in a more remote area, you need to make sure whether the transportation backup isn't is sufficient. So Mr. Chen Pan was asking about, you know, say people going to work at the airport. So there is also the concern about how people in Tongchun can go to the urban areas. Will you make changes to your projection for car park car parking spaces? So please let us know afterwards. On the third point concerning the airport, we will discuss that later. Next, uh, Albert Chen, third round, uh, two minutes. Albert Chen, <coughs> I hope the government provides more information because the Environmental Advisory Council just gives a general conclusion that standards are met and. Now on aircraft noise, 25 NEF. Now that's the average value. Now in other countries, they have different uh, NEFs for uh, daytime and nighttime. So, but in Hong Kong, we don't have that. So it's disastrous at night. The government will supply our data after the meeting. So please give us the data. Now. Uh, uh, now on air quality, now uh, it's uh, maybe better near the sea, but some uh, buildings are near the hills, and there are two large mountains in the high density buildings. Now the suspended particulates problems will be serious to the extent of being life threatening. So please provide us with charts or figures. According to your experts, now the third runway system that may come later uh, after the Tongchong uh, West uh, is completed. Now, uh, after the Tongchong West is built, and uh, uh, after the uh, Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge is uh, completed, now. Uh, the figures for those, please. And I believe they have done what's called the wind tunnel model. Please tell us uh, which spot is the worst, especially uh, from noon to 12 p.m. Which part in Tongchong is the worst, and what's the level of suspended particulates? Now. Uh, on the aircraft noise in Tongchong East. Now, for the residential developments, now the front, the middle, and the rear. From 12 midnight to 7 p.m., 
when uh, how many uh, uh, movements uh, uh, over 75 uh, decibels uh, and uh, up to 85 decibels how many movements during the night now you have answered the question on noise and air quality uh, I'm sure you can supply the data now so uh, please supply the information afterwards. Yes, we will do that. I also like to supplement. Now, NEF 25 as a way to express the level of aircraft noise. Now, that's an international standard. And NEF 25, it's uh, used by many advanced countries. Please provide us with a document. Which international airport uses the 25 NEF average value? Which advanced countries adopted in that manner? We will try our best. I'd like to explain further. Now, NEF 25 for calculating aircraft noise. Now, for daytime and nighttime, there are different methods of calculation. And for every movement at night, uh, it's been uh, calculated as uh, with a, a multiple of over 10 times. So I'm sure that the international standards, now Mr. Chen asked you to list out the standards uh, in other countries. Now, I'm, I think he's not saying that you just extract the figures for the night. But I will do my best. Now, uh, I will continue to ask questions. Now, okay, the no, you can speak. Now, on measuring aircraft noise, uh, you have uh, one minute. You are in the fourth round. Now, I'm not trying to filibuster. Now, I followed up on the aircraft noise issue for over 20 years. Please continue to ask. Now, I played a part in endorsing the Chelapkong Airport project. Now, the problem is that some people are subjected to 80 decibels of noise during nighttime, and it's not just once. Now, when aircraft pass with 85 decibels, people are waken up. Now, Chin Wan, Kwai Chong, Cheng Yi, many people have to uh, use sleeping pills and they have to uh, consult uh, psychologists, psychiatrists. Now, because the ability to tolerate aircraft noise varies with the person, so the facts tell us that the Craft noise at the China Cup Airport is very serious even now. Now, Tongchong East compared to Chun Wan, Kwai Chong, Ma Wan, the noise problem is more serious, especially late at night. <coughs> because at the time, it was said that at Ma Wan, the aircraft would be 7,000 feet above ground, but uh, it's now only several hundred feet, uh, although it's a little bit further away, but the line would certainly be higher than at Ma Wan. Now, uh, very often it's up to 75 at night. Even though you meet the 25 NEF, now uh, uh, after the third runway is built, they will not use the southern runway at night, they will only use the northern airport. Now this is not a legal requirement. Now in other c countries, they legislate to regulate aircraft noise. There can be criminal prosecution. We don't have that in Hong Kong. 
Now, uh, road noise, uh, industrial noise, those are subjected to uh, the legal regulation, but not for aircraft noise here in Hong Kong. Uh, any response from the officials? I have nothing further to add, but at the request of Mr. Chen, we will do our best to supply the information. Uh, Mr. Chen, you would like to uh, get the uh, information. Mr. Chen, will you mind? Now, I will finish what I'm saying first. Many members are not aware of the problem at Tongchong East. Uh, Tongchong East has uh, the most serious planning mistake in recent years. Now, if Tongchong East is used for uh, commercial or industrial purpose, I have no objection. But for Tongchong East uh, to be used as a residential area, that's a disaster. Now, I can argue this again in Finance Committee, but the problem is very serious. So I'm warning the government. I'd like to ask, are there any other members who wish to ask questions on this matter? If not, then I will put this item to a vote. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. Uh, now there will be a division. The bell shall ring for five minutes.
攞落嚟啊，攞嚟攞嚟唔該嚇。OK， 誒、啊、現在開始表決，請各位先按表。Please proceed to vote. Please press one of the three buttons to show your、uh, wish. Now, before I announce the results, please verify your vote. Voting stops. The results are displayed. Seventeen for, three against, one abstention. I declare the motion passed. The next item, head seven one one, paper PWSC bracket twenty fifteen dash sixteen, bracket fifty six. Eighty three T one. Public transport interchange at Pakwan Street, Shamshui Po. So please invite the administration to come in. Okay, come on, I leave him. So the paper proposes to upgrade eighty-three T one to category A. At an estimated cost of one hundred and eight point two million dollars in money of the day prices, in uh, twenty fifteen June first, um, the administration consulted the housing panel and members supported this plan. And the report on the um, key points discussed by the panel are tabled before you. Now with us is.、Um, Mr. Lo Kwok Kong, Chief Civil Engineer of the Transport Housing Bureau; Mr. Chong Chi Hoi, Regional Highway Engineer, Chief Highway Engineer; Mr. Chiu Put K, Mr. Chen Chi Kun, Chief Highway Engineer, and、uh, Mr. Lee, PTO from Transport Department; Mr. Ho Hin Leung, Chief Civil Engineer of Housing Department. Okay, Emily Leung first. Emily Lau first. Chairman,、uh, you may have seen. In、uh, enclosure two, the design there. When I look at it, I'm really scared. If you look at Chongquan O, I can show you several ones. Some taxis actually use them、uh, to park their cars. You can know why people wouldn't want to use this. So why are we building it again? The same thing again. In Chongqing now or other areas, you know the facilities that are not used at all. The taxis and mini buses don't go in there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Will we have another replica of what happened? Facility that's used by nobody. Administration, okay. This is a sheltered interchange, PTI. You are talking about this a self-enclosed interchange. Why is it self-enclosed? Because we want to maximize the potential of the site. Therefore, above the interchange will be public housing units. I'm asking you. My question was why similar designs are not used by people in the sector. As for this, I'm sure there will be people using this facility. In Patin Estate, there's an existing、uh, bus terminus, and the new PTI will actually、uh, be a、uh, actually provisioning of the existing interchange. And this semi-enclosed design、uh, may seem unpopular to you, but We try to actually in the design use、um, natural ventilation facilities in enclosure one. If you look at the plan there, to the south, to the north, there is a long boundary, and on both sides there are actually open areas. The wind direction in Patin Estate is.、Uh, Blowing from the north to the south, 
Well, the existing interchange is used by many because it's well ventilated, it's sited at an open area. But in Chung Kwan O or many other areas, well, I think 20% of the enclosed interchanges are used. I think ventilation is an issue because nobody wants to drive into an area which is like a um, uh, cooker. So have you reviewed the situation to make sure that the same thing won't happen again? Mr. Long, well, I think there will be people using it because it will consist of a bus terminal and the existing um, bus uh, serving the area will have to go there. Well, Mr. Lo, I'd like to interrupt. Sorry, I have to interrupt here. Ms. Lau was asking. Well, I would have asked the same question if I were not actually chairing the meeting. All these interchanges often have the problem with inadequate ventilation. Neither are they bright enough. There's lighting problems there. So how can you make sure that you said that, uh, you know, it will be used, but it also depends on whether the location of the interchange can actually be airy enough. You must have done some assessments at the site and measured the wind speed there. Ms. Lau was asking you, have you reviewed the past unsuccessful cases and what would you do to the latest design to make sure that people would be willing to go into the interchange there? I think this um, design is based on the um, standards expected of interchange and also in line with the um, air pollution control imposed by the Environmental Protection Department. There are actually mechanical ventilation systems there at the interchange. I'm not sure how he can convince us. He says that there must be people using it because there will be a bus terminal there. Of course, buses will have to drive in there, but you know taxis would not go there. Chairman, you know better than me. Mr. Low, I think I can go to Chung Ho with you to take a look at all the interchanges there. You will see how bad the situation is. The residents are very mad at this. You've used the land and yet nobody wants to use it. Nobody or no vehicles would like to park in there. So we need to make sure that this will be a feasible interchange. Otherwise, you keep building similar facilities and yet they will end up being white elephants. Well, Ms. Lau, this is a necessary facility. It's a matter of how you can improve on the design. For example, if the ceiling is too low, can you make it higher? I think you've taken on board our views. Please consider that to address our concerns in your design. The most important that it has to be something that it's welcoming to the residents. It should not be an area that is badly ventilated and with much, um, ex, uh, you know, exhaust fumes. Yes, we understand the point you made, and actually, we have created actually an interchange that has winds coming from four sides. So based on the wind speed. It will be the um, an improvement in this latest interchange. Uh, you said that, well, if uh, actually all four sides of the facility are not enclosed, doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be well ventilated. You need to let us know. Geographically speaking, this place will be well ventilated. Miss Lau was worried. Still. Yes, our consultants have done a report saying that uh, since the wind is blowing from north to south, so there should be actually adequate ventilation there. Ms. Lau, any follow-up questions? Next one. Albert Chen, the first time, four minutes. Chairman, I don't know in planning for bus termini, what criteria does the government use? Were there any objective criteria like movements of air and so forth? Natural wind, the movement of natural wind, or with your mechanical system there? 
Do you have any related figures? So that we won't have to argue again about whether it will be well ventilated or not. Do you have any objective figures available to show us, Mr. Low? As for the standards, the Environmental Protection Department has control on air pollution in fully enclosed and semi-enclosed PTIs. It will measure. All sorts of、uh, pollutants, the level pollutants there. For each square meters,、um, there is a limit set on the maximum amount of pollutants. We've also done a computer simulated testing to show that、um, the air quality is within acceptable limits. We will still try to. Ensure that there'll be、uh, natural air ventilation coming in from four sides, and for the open areas, actually along the boundaries of the PTI, forty percent of the boundaries actually are open areas that can allow fresh air to come in. We also have the me mechanical ventilation system. That will try to meet the、um, standard on、uh, imposed by the Environmental Protection Department when it comes to air pollution. Okay, I think I was asking you also about the standards. If there are any standards on air movement, especially during summertime, semi-enclosed or partially enclosed PTI or bus terminal. Often, you know, it's so hot over there that some elderly people might even、um, faint because of the very bad air quality there. So, do you have any standard or objective standard on the、um, natural air movement there and your mechanical system? What sort of criteria are you using、uh, to measure the effectiveness of the system in terms of、uh, air movement? For example, per minute on a per minute basis. Yes, I can you give us the figures so that we can measure it in the days ahead, Mr. Low. As for the mechanical ventilation system, the design is such that each hour it can change the air at least fifteen times. Per hour, at the interchange. So, how about the temperature? For natural air ventilation, I'll ask、uh, my colleague to supplement.、Uh, colleagues from the housing department, is it Mr. Chu? Yeah, for natural ventilation, as I said, we have asked consultants to do a study looking at the wind direction. In the open area,、uh, the open area are particularly big from the north to the south, towards the south. I think your time's up. Next round, please. Next one, Lam Kong Hong. First time, four minutes. Let me give you give you a story. When smoking was banned, there was a bar that suddenly hoped to apply for the permission to、um, for it to allow. Customers to smoke when it sells, you know, during liquor selling hours. We went to his、uh, smoking room, where, in where, the air is fresher inside the room than outside it. And then Yok Chan later on said that well, we could not actually、uh, cause harm to people outside. Why did I tell you the story? People would try all means to sustain their business. So what about the government? I've looked at your plan. It is isn't really much different from others. On top of the、uh, the buildings, you well, you have、um, you have actually a cover, and you said that the north and south exits are quite spacious. You said you can change air fifteen times per hour. Per half an hour, each hour I think, but I think that's inadequate. During summertime, try to go into any 
PGI designed by you is so stuffy and hot. And when the Environmental Protection Department did the measurement, did it use any average value? Because at particular days of the year, the air could be particularly polluted and hot. So for elderly people, they could faint. So it's pointless to just uh, go for an average, you know, to look at the average figure. If it's a very uh, humid day where the uh, wind speed is very slow, then the situation could be too much for a person to bear. So you have to ensure, say, on an hourly basis. Now you said there'll be a changing of air 15 times at least, but how about 30 times since that per hour? Would you have any opinion on that? What would you think? No, I told you the story about uh, the business trying to get more customers by having this uh, smoking facility. Mr. Law, can you have a higher standard? Mm -hmm. On what's acceptable air quality, now we put a sensor inside. It will measure the for the polluting gases. Now, if there are there's a high level of polluting gases, we will activate the ventilation mechanism, and the air will be changed. 15 times an hour. So you use a detector. If you detect pollution, the machine will be turned on. So 15 times uh, an hour, what do you mean? So it was originally 15 times an hour, and then if the air quality is poor, then it's 16 or 17 or 18 times, Mr. Law. Now the detector the sensor will sense the will detect the uh, quality of the pollution, and uh, when the level is high, they will uh, raise the level for the machine, for the system. Now the speed can be varied if the pollution level is high, the ventilation, the air changing. Uh, level will be high. <clears throat> now you have natural ventilation normally when the sensor senses a high level of pollution the mechanical ventilation device will be turned on and you answered Mr. Leung saying that the speed will vary if the air quality stays poor then the design may be higher than the original 15 times as the originally designed. Next, uh, Helena Wong, first round, four minutes. Now, for this PTI, it says that there are uh, six bays for uh, franchise buses and minibuses. Now, There is a car park upstairs, and there are community facilities, including a daycare center for the elderly, and a dental clinic, and a residential home for the elderly. Now, there are so many elderly people there. They have the buses to take them there because it's a day center. Now, do you have a slot place at the PTI for them to uh, alight uh, or sit upstairs? Now, the PTI is for franchise buses and minibuses. Now, as for uh, other vehicles, there are car parks. Uh, and there are commercial facilities and uh, residential buildings uh, up there, so there are other uh, roadways uh, for those purposes. So the buses and the ambulances 
uh, which are often used by the elderly and uh, also the buses which take the elderly to the day center, they are all parked upstairs. So this sum of money that you're asking for doesn't uh, cover the facilities uh, above the PTI. Now, we don't know about where there are parking spaces for the ambulances and so on. Now, if there are none upstairs, you should have them here. Now, this is not in the document. Do you have a plan for the car park arrangement above the PTI, Mr. Long? Concerning the superstructure, uh, is the uh, housing uh, association uh, that will develop it and pay for it. Now, uh, as for the outlay, I will invite uh, the housing department to respond. Now, uh, there are upper and lower levels, uh, so we use that for the podium. So the buses go straight into the PTI, and uh, at the upper level, uh, there's an emergency access, and uh, the vehicles can approach directly on the podium to uh, approach these facilities. So they don't go through the car park. They don't. So the community facilities uh, do not enter via the PDI, but at the high podium directly from Pac One Street, and there are parking spaces inside. Are the housing department colleagues here who can tell us how many parking spaces will there be uh, for the ambulances and uh, buses that take the elderly to the day center? Mr. Chu, do you have the information? Now, we are discussing with the social welfare department because different centers have different requirements. We will uh, come up with an arrangement that's suitable. So will you uh, follow the existing uh, guidelines and codes? Yes. Now, I support the scheme, but I hope that before you go to the Finance Committee, you can tell us now after the vehicles come into the higher podium, how many parking spaces are reserved for these institutions. Otherwise, you, unless you have enough space there, you have to ensure that there are parking spaces below because there are RCHEs there. There will certainly be the facilities, but if members need more information, we can supplement. Next, uh, Leung Chi Cheung, first round, four minutes. Thank you. Now, I am reminded of the Tin Hang Estate car park. It's the same there. There's a service uh, complex above, and there's uh, at the lower level, there's the PTI. I go there often. There's a noise problem. When the buses and minibuses go in, there's a loud noise. And you explain that you try to mitigate that, but I find a new problem. Now, these in PTIs are mostly for buses and PTIs, uh, and buses and uh, uh, minibuses. Now, uh, this one is mainly for the minibuses. Now, the, the drivers uh, have difficulty finding toilets uh, unless you have arranged uh, for these uh, upstairs. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, uh, there may be a problem uh, because there doesn't seem to be any toilet from the plan. Now, the driver very often can alight only for a short time. Now, the, in some cases, the uh, developers, the contractors, built a temporary provisional toilet for these drivers. Now, if I remember 
correctly, uh, if I'm right, now you let the housing association uh, build it. Uh, now, why is the cost so high? Now, uh, we understand the members' concerns. Now, uh, if the contractors, drivers uh, need toilets, I, we can tell you that there are toilets all around. Uh, it's a shopping mall uh, upstairs, and uh, there are toilets there. And the transport department has already also contracted the contractors, and uh, uh, there's the undertaking that there will be toilets in the PTI for the drivers. You mean provisional toilets? or permanent one. Uh, can the transport department supplement? Now, at the shopping mall, there are permanent toilets. Of course, there will be toilets in the shopping mall, but the bus drivers have a very limited time. Transport department, uh, Ms. Lee, can you answer? Now, at the same level as the PTI, uh, next door, there is a market. At that level, there are public toilets there, and also the bus company. Well, there may be staff who have an urgent need. Uh, they put a uh, mobile toilet that is uh, uh, of a, uh, a late modern design, advanced design. Uh, so the, you're sure that the bus company has it? Yes. Mr. Leung, uh, uh, you may accept the answer, but I have a comment. Now, this is not yet built. Why don't you build a toilet, a small one, at the PTI? Because very often, I under, uh, I, as I understand it, the drivers may be late and they have only one or two minutes. If you want them to dash up to the shopping mall, it's impossible. Since you haven't built it already, uh, why don't you build one there? You don't need a big one because there are few vehicles, actually. I believe uh, it's the housing department or will it be proposed by the transport department and considered by the housing department? Mr. Long? The, the shopping mall is already there, but it might be very far away. The contractor uh, will put the toilet there and they will maintain and manage it. So this is uh, to be done by the contractor. So we'll leave it for you to discuss with the contractors. Next, uh, Fernando Cheung, first round, four minutes. Chairman, you don't accept the reply, nor do I. I'm familiar with that too, because uh, under, uh, uh, downstairs from where I live, there is such a PTI too. The drivers uh, have very limited time to go to the toilet. Very often they have to uh, go uh, out again on the next round. So the toilet is very important. If you rely on provisional toilets uh, by put there by the bus company, that's very undesirable. It's inhumane. Now, you plan for a PTI. Uh, you must note that the bus driver's needs and have to be catered to. Now, for the inspectors uh, of the terminals, they may have time to go further away. So I thank uh, Leung Chi Cheng for raising this question. I feel it's essential. Also, on the noise problem, I think that's not 
a major one, but on air quality, because it's an indoor PTI, uh, as is the one down from where I live, they have a uh, uh, ventilation uh, vents uh, where the exhaust gas is emitted, and that may affect the elderly living up there uh, and the public uh, housing residents. So how do you uh, let the waste gases be discharged and yet not affect the life of people living upstairs? So on uh, the ventilation and uh, emission arrangements, now at the top of the PTI, uh, these are located in uh, the upper Pack 1 Street. Uh, the air is drawn in and uh, is discharged, uh, discharged at the lower Pack 1 Street. And we have uh, uh, assessed and uh, make sure that it meets the uh, EPD requirements. At, uh, uh, there's an on-tin house uh, at Harpark One Street will it be would they be affected? The EPD standards will be met because uh, they are a distance away, and uh, there is uh, also a ventilation facility. So the design of the ventilation outlet is also one that meets the air pollution uh, requirement imposed by the EPD. As for the care homes for the elderly, is it near upper part one or lower pack one? I mean, the welfare facilities for old people is in the podium. And is uh, okay. You can go to the homes from the podium. So there is a height limit for homes, therefore they will not be uh, built high up. But that's why I'm worried whether the exhaust fumes from the ground floor or from the ground up would actually uh, be circulated near the podium. So the exhaust fumes or the um, polluted air, when blown upwards, they could actually pose pollution to residents or uh, people living in the care homes. I think on this we can look at the design again to m make sure that that won't be the case. So please put on record. Uh, members worry in that regard. So your design for the ventilation shaft later on, well, we won't know until you've got the detailed design done and the paper ready. But please uh, take a note of that. Next one, Chen Ken did you raise your hand just then? All right, you'll be in the first round. Four minutes. Chairman, talking about the toilets, I think we all feel that drivers do need to have access to toilets. Chairman, I should say, it doesn't have to be big, but it has to be usable by drivers and passengers. I was wondering whether because you have to have the drainage and sewage systems in store and to have the toilet there, it will add to the cost. But since we have residential buildings above the facility, so there must be the sewage systems in place there anyway. Therefore, we can allocate uh, some space to build a toilet with one or two cubicles for the convenience of anyone who drop by the area. If we just rely on the minibus operators to build, say, a mobile toilet, well, that also takes up space. You know that that kind of design toilet actually is so smelly, and it's not really good for the surrounding environment. And they also need to find uh, people and and get. You know, use an extra vehicle to get the cleaning done. So why don't you plan for such a public toilet instead? And it wouldn't cost much. So please think about it. Thank you, Chen Kam Dam. My concern here as well. 
I think you should build a toilet there as well, because after you've built it, then the uh, cleaning work can be done by the minibus operator in the future. But they have to spend money cleaning up any toilet there anyway, whether it's built by them or not. So please seriously consider our suggestion. Next one is M. Li Lao. Second round, three minutes. Yes, I agree with your points on the toilet. You need to actually address people's needs. I received in my office received complaints about lack of toilets. So please consider that. And just then I was talking about the um, bad design of PTIs in many districts. You said at this time this one should be okay. You asked us to believe you. I hope that you know, we can really do. But having built so many PTIs that are like white elephants, I'd like to invite Mr. Lowe to. Well, let's not go to too many districts. Let us go with me, you know, to Chongqing O to look at the PTI and see what more the government can do to actually revive people's interest in PTIs. Have you thought about that, or do you think there's nothing much you can do about unpopular PTIs? Can you do? To actually help increase usage of the PTIs, Mr. Lau, Ms. Lau has taken the initiative to go to the site with you in person. I think you should accept it. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you, Ms. Lau, for your invitation. I will. I and my colleague from the transport department would be willing to look into that. Do you think work can be done? Well, that's. Well, you have to take a look first. Well, they may not have been to the site. Well, I'll, Mr. Lau, I will go with you. Someday, okay. Next one, Helena Wong. Second round, three minutes. Chairman, I support your point just then about you know providing toilets at PTI. You know, drivers, passengers will find it useful. I'm also concerned since there are care homes for the elderly, above it, so for people who are taken by their family to the homes. They may go there by public transport and then go up to the homes above. They may not go there by um, you know, using designated transportation provided by the homes. So those elderly people may need toilet facilities too. I also like to ask about trees. You said you will fell for trees, and you said that they're not on the. Um, Old trees registered, but what trees are they? How old are they? Have you got any information on them? Any information? If not, can you provide it to us afterwards? Okay, please do. After this meeting, please, Mr. Low. The four trees, to be fair, we will compensate for them. But besides that, at the site, together with the public housing, public housing development. Above, we will actually plant altogether 128 trees. I was asking what kinds of trees were they? You know, the four trees that were fell. Please provide us with additional information. You know, in a separate paper, what trees were they? You said you would plant uh, more than 100 trees at the site and the area above it, right? Yes. And now I'm also worried about the bus termini and mini bus stops. At PTIs, those um, bus stops have no benches. Is it possible for you to? You only have the railings at the bus stop, but like MTRCL, sometimes they would create some sort of sitting facility for people to um, lie or to um, rest a, a while. So there are lots of old people waiting. Possibly at the bus stops, and now it's particularly since the area is frequent, frequented by old people, sometimes they may have to wait for quite a long time for buses or minibuses. You don't have to create luxury benches or chairs. I think for this project worth more than a hundred million dollars, it costs very very little to provide some sort of chairs or sitting. So is that possible? To provide convenience, well, we 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 won't not just think about. We will confirm that we will build it. Yeah, create chairs there. I think we've got a quorum now. 
And this item, it seems that there isn't much controversy about this item, even though we have expressed our views. If you want to vote on this item, I would expect you all to remain here to keep the quorum. Okay, I was asking um, you know, about uh, about the, uh, the his point about um, providing chairs or seating facilities at the bus stops and permanent. Could you actually have this written down in a paper or something? Okay, yes, I will. Yeah, it's possible, right? Okay. Next one, Albert Chen. I don't want to call any today, but is it that the government has promised to build toilets? I think all members have spoken support that. Well, I think they have to promise. I think it's it's unprecedented for a PWSC to be as united. You know, we all united for the sake of toilets. Mr. Lowe, I think uh, we have considered that in shopping malls on different levels there are toilets, and. Actually, on the actually within the shopping mall, there are also some toilets, and the transport department has talked to the contractor about building more toilets. Is it that you wouldn't build a toilet at the PTI? Well, I will have to see what the transport department thinks <coughs> or what supplement they have. Okay, transfer department, Ms. Stella Lee. Would you get toilets built? Maybe the housing department can answer. Mr. Ho? We will, with the transport department, discuss the idea with the contractor. In the detailed design stage, we'll try to incorporate a toilet there in the design as much as possible. Yes, please don't spoil our unity so far. It's unprecedented. Yes, I think members' point is noted. Okay, thank you. Please put this on record. Thanks. I hope that by the time this item goes to Finance Committee, before then, please give us a definite reply. Chairman, another brief point. Hong Kong, you know, with this uh, semi enclosed PTI. Over, pa over the past years, there have been two issues. One is that these P um, TIs are too stuffy, and sometimes the other problem is it's so windy that uh, people find the BTIs too strange, too cold. So there are lots of uh, I know uh, constraints with the design. I know if your design is too open, if you demolish walls like Chunwan, Lugyang, Sunchun. It happened if you um, tear down all the walls to increase ventilation, air ventilation. Yet, does area become so windy that people find it very disturbing and um, too cold either? So you have to design it in such a way that there can be shelters from wind, and yet the interchange is not too stuffy. So you kept mentioning. About the uh, air quality control imposed by the Environmental Protection Department, but that's not the point. So I hope you can put more thoughts into the um, temperature issue. Okay, would you agree to extending this uh, meeting by three minutes so, look, so that we can finish the voting? Uh, by five minutes, better. Okay, so we can finish the voting on this item. Okay, my turn now. I've noticed that. At the PTI, there's no space for taxi stand. The taxi stand will be outside in an open area there. The, in your plan, within the between the two columns, there is actually space for a taxi stand. Why is not? Why are you not accommodating that? I think Helena Wong has asked uh, similar questions. You have uh, care homes for the elderly above it. If people can come down to the interchange. You know, people are not taking the rehab buses. If they can come down to the interchange and can get on a taxi there, it's better for them to do that, to it that way than go outside to catch a taxi. Mr. Long, I think the PTI design in such a way that um, the bus terminal is such that uh, 
the bus will have passengers going off and off on both sides and central in the center area of the um, interchange there will be the parking spaces for buses so so that means in the middle of the interchange waiting buses will be parked there and mini buses there as well yes no. Uh, I'm also worried about the access for the elderly. Now, uh, apart from we have bus, uh, uh, can the taxis also go there, or uh, can, can the elderly alight there? I'm not talking about taxi stand. They can uh, alight there, uh, but uh, there's no pickup. There can be no waiting. Now. There's the public housing development. They have the access road, and uh, they uh, can accommodate ordinary pickup and uh, alighting. The, the answer is yes. Uh, Helena Wong, uh, I have a further question. Now, the ventilation of the air of the terminus now uh, uh, is open on the side of. Uh, Pacwan Street and on the upper podium uh, it's covered. Now actually it's uh, it's uh, very uh, dark and uh, they, there's no uh, cross ventilation. Uh, there's no two-way circulation. Now if you don't cover it up it would be better but the uh, it's a uh, there's a slope there. Now, we there might be it might be very stuffy with uh, exhaust gases because this is the other exit at Pack One Street. Now, so the plan you provide is a bit misleading because the other side of the plan is the high podium, but this is. Uh, covered so there won't be sunlight so where does the air come in airflow come in so you must uh, tell us uh, about the airflow otherwise it will be stuffy and dark and it's open only on one side Mr. Law? now there's uh, the upper and lower uh, Pack One Street are different levels so uh, the uh, PTI is at this position, so it is in fact lower than uh, Upper Pacwan Street. And so when uh, the air blows there, they has to exit, so it goes along the slope into the PTI. But the air can go in uh, only if the uh, upper level is uh, not covered but if you look at the plan the upper level is covered so how does the air go in because the air, uh, the upper level is covered the air enters and it will go to the uh, lower level uh, via the PTI and exit on the south now I need a more scientific answer. There has to be cross circulation. Now, if you don't have cross circulation, then you have a giant uh, fan and it will cause noise. Can you supply the document so that we can see the design clearly? It's not uh, totally enclosed, but uh, the uh, document we can supply later to clarify. Now, there are no other members who wish to speak, so I put this item to a vote. Uh, those in favor, please raise their hands. Please hold. So uh, it's unanimous. Thank you. I think it's now time. So thank you, uh, no AOB, thank you.